Let's cross over to Roland. Over a week ago of this uh, grave, if not big, disaster, and that's why we're here, TV3 New Day, live in the North Town constituency. And um, now, so far, we have the aerial shots yes. that's indicating inundated uh, waters of the various communities. Yes, um, as you can see, it, it, you know, it's one thing to see it on television, and it's an entirely different thing to see it live. A lot of houses, homes, businesses, restaurants, schools, hospitals have been completely submerged underwater. And being on the water now, we're, we're currently next to something that I believe was a, a drinking spot. But now, um, more than half of it is underwater. Also, on the water now, I cannot begin to describe the stench, the smell of the water. And the water is totally black. You, you cannot see the inside of it. You, we, it's, it it's, it's terrible. And since yesterday, when we came, we went into the town, we walked around, and we spoke to some of the people in the community. I particularly spoke to a young boy, a 12-year-old boy, Della, who told me that his school has been completely submerged, and he and his classmates have since not been able to go to school. It has totally changed their way of life. It has affected them very terribly, and they have not, well, I should say I have not in my entire life seen a flood like this, of this magnitude. And the, the, the truth is, this is not the first time these areas have been flooded, but this is the first time we're seeing a flood of this magnitude here in, in Mepe and its surrounding communities. So this morning, we're going to bring you a live coverage of more than anything, how these devastating floods have affected the way of life of the people. Um, a real time account of the relief and support that they are receiving. We are going to cross over at some point to the shelter, the secondary school, where a lot of the people have taken cover this morning. Well, and, and as you will see uh, on your screens, we have aerial shots that comprehensively have been taken of the various um, communities within the North Tongue Enclave, including Mefe, and you find that residential homes as well as businesses are all in the flood waters. Uh, importantly, we have to situate that uh, just like the way we're seated in a canoe, that has become the means of transport. Uh, ideally, just a week or two ago, if you came here, you would find that this was just uh, uh, an intersection yeah. of the main road where you can walk on foot and then go to any neighbor or somebody else. And that is the difficulty that many of these residents will have to contain with. Yes. Um, we do know that thousands of people have been affected by this. Yes. What is needed is for you also to donate your support. And Media General, through three foundation, we have uh, officially, as you know now, launched our own relief fund as a campaign to make sure that all of us contribute to this big disaster, a disaster of disastrous magnitude. And all of us need to make sure that. You, you want to apprise people of the short codes yes. as well as um, the, we're, the we're asking numbers. you to support, and the number that you can send your donations to mm -hmm. is 0597433110. Or you can basically or simply send it to MTN Merchants Code 120494. 120494. And when we say no amount is too small, we mean it. Um, talking to the people yesterday, they talked about how basically the shops that they used to go to to even buy gari and sugar have all been submerged, and they are all one people in this community. Mm -hmm. So even though you see that um, when you go to higher ground, so on this side, it appears relatively dry and um, life is going on as usual or normal, everyone on this side is affected. And because they are one people and one family, they are all affected by this. It's 
devastating. And well, so certainly. please do send your, your support mm. through um, no amount is too small. Yes, yeah, certainly. And Media General 3 Foundation are making this possible. And as you already know, we have the merchant number as well as the mobile account for you to send through your donations. Or you can walk through the premises of Media General just around uh, Kanda, the, close to the Jubilee House or what we call the Presidential Drive and then make your walk-in donations. But uh, we already have uh, some big regular watchers of the show making their contributions uh, to this um, big support that is needed for those who have been affected, thousands of victims following the Akosobo Dam spillage. Chairman, uh, Chairman Godwin Tamaklo of the Rates Group came in with his workers the whole of yesterday. They were with a member of parliament for Norton, Samuel Kujetua Blakwa, who um, possibly will be joining us within the course of our interaction. And uh, with the Rates Group, they were able to donate a number of assorted items as well as food packs to be donated to many of the communities. Indeed, we've had First Kai, a number of them all uh, making their presence felt in the constituency. And I should tell you, Roland, last night when we came here, around 9 p.m., we saw that there were people crossing over from this side to the other side, and it was pitch black. And I, I, I mean, it was not safe because a lot of these people do not have live um, jackets or Wellington boots or even torch lights. So as we continue to ask for food items and ask for um, monetary support and so on, we also ask for life jackets. We ask for Wellington boots. We ask for torch lights to make their commutes from one side of um, the flat end to the other side safer. Because from what we saw last night, Roland, it was, it was very dangerous, mm. very, very dangerous. Mm. There were children trying to cross over. So. Mm. So you, you, you can see people crossing over now um, on your screens, but at night it's so much worse. If you think this is dangerous, well, you, you should see it at night. In fact, you will not see it because it's too dark and black. And you know that power has totally, uh, th there's a total blackout on this side. Uh, the electricity is out. So we're going to talk to Achu. Achu, you were with us last night. Uh, you took us round last night. What, what can you tell us about what is happening now? What used to be here at this particular spot we are, we are standing in? We are facing a lot because if you see the water, no one on this set will be able to drink this water. Our farms, builders, everything collapsed. So we are seeking, calling for help. We need more things that can make us safe in this town. What do you need exactly? Come again. What are some of the things that you need? As you said, we need lab jackets for one, and also food that we eat, water that we will bath. Because this water you cannot bath. You can't bath. You can't use this water to bath. So we need water, food, and also medical Medical uh, or, or uh, this uh, clinic that will take care of us. All right. And as you see around that, this is the transport point. And Achu, um, before last week or two, this was just a normal area, right? There was no water here. Yes. And now it's become a, a canoe transport point. Okay, so um, how many people do you and your friends tend to transport daily here? How many people? I'm in the name of Goji. A lot of people, because if you go to uh, like the school there, Kizito there, people are there having nothing to do. They are living there because of the fraud. So instead of them to be there, they will be uh, hungry, will catch them. So they have to come here and buy food and go back. So every day, a lot of people cross here and there. And is there sufficient food from what you know? When they cross over to this side, are they able to bring enough to the other side? Some people have donated food items to you, but we've had reports that their raw food items like rice, fresh rice, bagged rice, spaghetti and so on, is not very useful to you because you cannot cook it. You don't have the utensils and so on to cook it because you're displaced. What, what, what can we do, really? Would you prefer that the food that is brought to you is already cooked and so on? Yes, we prefer something like that because you don't have a place to cook. So if they will cook the food and bring it to us, it will be safe than bringing us the rice, 
for we ourselves to be cooking. Okay. And about how many people are in the school? Do you know? I can't tell you now. 